Dear Boomers, <clears throat> I woke up this morning feeling a little down, and uh, I can attribute it to some of the news stations that I was watching, which I should never be watching, but I want to keep myself sort of up to date on certain calamities that are taking place. And then I remembered I can't go down this slippery slope because the first thing, if you start thinking, the first thing you think about is something that is bringing you down, that's going to continue throughout the day. So I remembered the I am meditations. I am enough. I am worthy. I am love. And so are you. You, you come to realize that there are no accidents in the universe. And everything is a opportunity to rise above the muck and get above, you know, think about emotions that uplift you. You can purposely do that and think that the I am got me out of it. Um, there are no accidents in the universe. Everything that takes place has the pieces move around by something much bigger than ourselves. There's something so much greater than my silly mood of feeling depleted. That is something that I immediately took care of when I became conscious of it, which was almost immediately. So the I am discourses, we can, uh, here's a quote I can share with you. The first expression of every individual everywhere in the universe, either in spoken word, silent thought, or feeling, is I am. Recognizing its own conquering divinity, the student must stand guard over his thoughts and expression in words or otherwise. For every time you say, I am not, I cannot, I have not. You are throttling that great presence within you. Now think about that. I'm so happy that I uh, was able to throttle that great, that I didn't throttle the great presence within me. I did not. So you must be conscious of how you use these words. For instance, I am strong. I am well. I am content. Even if you your senses tell you something else. As um, putting I am in front of something in your mind and imagination is a very powerful way to attract what it is that you want to attract into your life and recognizing your own divinity. So I was uh, also thinking about all the babies I have witnessed being born into this world and how they have that great I am presence when they are born. And the few people I have been with, when they pass on, pass out of this world, they have that same I am identity that seems to propel you up and out. I will never forget my husband's expression as he was, when he died, he had the most wow look on his face that I had ever seen. It was, uh, it was like, oh, startled. Oh, my God, startled. So the I am discourses, and then I'd like to think about Wayne Dyer, who wrote a book called Wishes Fulfilled. The first foundation is called the imagination. And as we have said several times on this uh, YouTube channel, the imagination is the most important thing that we can use in, in imagining the life that we are bringing to us. Use the imagination. William Blake once said, what, of course he once said it because he has passed on for a long time, what is now proved was once only imagined. If you want to manifest something new in your life, you must first imagine it. Imagine it. Your imagination is yours alone. You can always place anything into your imagination that you want, independent of what others say or what your senses tell you. 
And as you, uh, you know, Albert Einstein said, the imagination is more important than knowledge, and knowledge is limited. Imagination encircles the world. So the more that we imagine, use our imagination purposely throughout the day, taking gratitude breaks for the imagination to rise up and and let us feel empowered. So it, it's um, a beautiful thing. I'll, I'll never forget when my husband did die, as I just mentioned, from COVID in 2020. He, I had the, the choice to go down a slippery slope into an abysmal way of looking at life. It was a little, you know, we had a partnership. We were together most of the time because he had retired and my jobs didn't require that I go out more than three times a week at night when everybody's asleep anyway. But I feel that his, you know, going on and his presence from the other side has helped me in ways that I don't know. I, I feel it, but I don't know how to express it. And that is how I was able to to survive that situation. Um, and ever since then, I have been enjoying the life that I have left. And it could be a long time, or it may not be. Einstein said, if you want your children to be intelligent, read them fairy tales. And if you want them to be even more intelligent, read them more fairy tales, which begs the question, should we be reading fairy tales too? That's not a bad idea. I uh, well, I remember when that was a, a sort of a craze when I was in the, in the 70s, people were talking about reading fairy tales and we did. And it, it was kind of, the fairy tales were kind of stark and, and a little depressing, but they did have a message. A lot of it was metaphorical. And even the uh, Moby Dick, the, the book Moby Dick by Melville, that was not about conquering a whale. That was about conquering our inner sphere of imagination to, you know, David and Goliath, you know, that kind of thing. We need to stand in the mythic realm of light at all times, every day. When we feel the energy go down, no matter what it is that we are confronted with, we bring it back up with getting out of the fear into the joy, gratitude, unconditional love, and forgiveness that we can choose to feel. So this is a... You know, it might not be a bad idea to, if you have an idea to create something in this world, that you imagine the end. Keep the end in mind. Uh, and that's what they say about making YouTube video thumbnails. Think of what it is that you want to create in the YouTube video, and then think about the thumbnail as part of what you are, are doing. And that makes sense. It's actually uh, falling into this, this philosophy that I'm talking about. So you must disregard appearances, conditions, and all evidence of your senses that deny the fulfillment of your desire. Neville said that. Rest in the assumption that you already are what you want to be. So this means that you need to live by the faith of this assumption. Regardless of what your senses tell you, regardless what people tell you, you can't do this, you are foolish to move ahead with your idea, don't listen to people. Although at the same time, you are kind to them and you regard them with the love that you hope that people regard you as. We are treating people as we wish to be treated. And that is the secret of the world. It's an amazing idea that we have control every moment of every day of how we think and how we feel. We have to be conscious of the 
of the thoughts that come in from random negativity that is in the world and we consciously bring the thought of love and we consciously think of gratitude for what not only what we have but what is coming to us what is coming to us this is these these are attitudes that we can carry forth every day through the breath because when i felt the way i felt in the morning this morning i used the breath immediately and i thought of the i am discourses which I'm going to study a little bit more. And the imagination through the I am and through the breath was just amazing. If you want to see another video, there's going to be one right up here. And have fun. Blessings on your day.